In the second part of um, section chapter 1, section 2, we want to talk about the properties of real numbers. These are very basic properties. You've learned them before multiple times in junior high and also last year in Algebra 1. The first one we want to talk about is the commutative property. Now these are very hard for me to remember, understand, even today, commutative. Commute means to change. Okay? Commute means to change. That means something has to move, move around. So for addition, the commutative property is going to look something like this. If we have real numbers, for real numbers, A, B, C. Okay? For real numbers A, B, and C, if we have A plus B equals B plus C. Commutative. Okay? Means we can change the order. Something has to move. And when we're adding two numbers together, it doesn't matter which order they're in. We can move the order. Okay, the same thing with multiplication. We can change the order. A times B is the same as B times C. And we're going to get the same answer. Commutative property of addition and multiplication. We can change the order of those things. Now, let's talk about the associative property. <laughs> associative property is a little easier. It's who you associate with. I can stand right here and have, I can stand right here, have a neighbor right here and somebody sitting right here, and then I can associate with this person. I now am associated with this. I haven't moved, changed positions, but I'm associated with that person. Or I can associate with this person. And that's this concept here. Associated property, association. Associated property says that we come along, we have real numbers A, B, and C. We can go A plus B, parenthesis, plus C equals A plus B plus C. So it doesn't matter how we associate them. We can associate the A and the B together, or we can associate the B and the C together. Let's get that erased there. Our time. Okay. Just drawn back up here so it makes sense. Okay. This is going to equal A plus B plus C. Okay? So it doesn't matter how I associate. The A, the B here is associated with A. Over here it's associated with a C. When we're doing pure addition all the way across, it doesn't matter how we associate or which one we do first, as long as it's always this. The same thing over here. I can come over here and go, oh, I want A times B times C. And I want to do it this way. That is the same as saying A times B times C, and I'm going to do like that. All we're doing is changing which multiplication. It's all multiplication. This is all multiplication. I'm associating the B with the A. I'm associating the B with the C. All of that is identical. The rules of algebra, associative properties say that we can do that. Now, the identity pro property. Identity means who are you? I'm me. Okay? So, the identity property of addition says, for any real number A, there is a real number that I can add to it and get the same number. Huh? That simply means that I can add something to A that will give me A. Well, that's pretty simple. A plus 0 equals A. And then if we put into the commutative property, that's the same thing as saying 0 plus A. Wow, 0 plus A equals A. There is a number I can add to A that will give me A. There is a number I can add to A that will give me A, and we can commute that. Now, for multiplication, the same thing. There is a number I can multiply by A and get A. Okay? A times 1 equals A 
equals 1 times A. Okay? That is the identity property. All right? The identity property of addition and multiplication. Okay, the next one is the inverse property. All right? The inverse property says, for any real number A, there is a number that I can add to A that will give me zero. There is a number that I can add to A that will give me zero. Okay? So let's try that. A plus negative A gives me zero. Or negative A plus A will also give me zero. The inverse property says, wow, there is a number that is the opposite of A that when I add them together will give me zero. A number opposite A that will give me zero. Multiplication is a little bit different. It simply says, wow, there is a number in multiplication that is opposite A multiplication-wise that will give me one. Okay? A times 1 over A equals 1. Equals 1 over A times A. Alright? So the inverse property simply says, there's a number that is opposite A. When I add them, it gives me 0. Multiplication inverse says, wow, there is a number that I can multiply times A that will give me 1. Okay? Now the distributive property. Distributive property says, I can distribute things. I can take this and do a different operation with it. Let's look at that. Notice that it is not for addition or multiplication. It just simply is and stands all by itself. So let's talk about it. If we have something that looks like this, A times the quantity B plus C, we can change that around and say, wow, I can distribute this multiplication across this in here. And that's going to equal A times B plus A times C. Alright? Now, we can also commute that and say this. B plus C times A equals B plus quantity B plus C times A is going to equal what? B A plus C. Okay. Okay? And we recognize that these two are the same simply by what? Commutative property of multiplication. Okay? The distributive property allows us to distribute this multiplication across these two add-ins. Alright? This does the same thing. We come up with the same answer. Why? Because these two are the same because of the commutative property multiplication. Those are the properties of real numbers. You have problems with them, you need to practice them. Go out on the internet, find a way to remember them, memorize this, look in the book, do whatever you need to do, come see me, talk to your neighbor, but get these properties down because we're going to be using them. You'll use them the rest of your math career.